family. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it's so hard, you know, divorce gets like, is it so that here you are, you're going through this divorce, but now it's like you have this, it's in the public. It's not just on a TV show. That's one thing for Netflix, but it's literally in the tabloids every, I mean, does that just must make it such hard, like so, so much hard. harder on such a it's different so level. hard. It's so hard. And I think the hardest part was that anyone believed any of his lies before the whistle, like now that the whistleblower came out, people understand. But before that, it didn't even make logical sense. Like on one hand, I was being accused of marrying him because he's a billionaire. But on the other hand, I wasn't spending any of his money. I was stealing it from the company. And then on one hand, I was supposed to have stolen all this clothing. But then on the other thing, my whole closet is on TV. We live together. I mean, the whole thing made zero logical sense. The car that I was supposed to have to stolen, where I literally showed people that I paid for it with my own vehicle. Like, none of it made any logical sense. And the fact that anyone believed it and didn't didn't think to themselves wait but that doesn't make sense I mean I saw her closet on the show and he's saying he never saw her like none of it made any sense and yet people bought it um and that was very painful for me that all it took was a guy without any proof defying logic literally and people still believed it that hurt a lot that hurt a lot that all it took was one man saying I'm gonna take credit for all her work and I'm gonna accuse her of everything that the only thing I haven't been accused of recently by this man is witchcraft and i'm sure that's coming it might be coming and that's also it's not the only about thing I haven't either. Gotten thrown. yeah that's my point i was seductress con artist lazy i forget all the other ones but i mean basically anything that anyone has ever thrown at a woman has been thrown at me so first was she married a billionaire then when everyone found out that he never was a billionaire by the time i married him he had very little money left it was like, oh, well, she didn't marry a billionaire, fine. But okay, she took money from the, like, anyway, it's very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I imagine. And then do you feel as that happens, like, do you want to clap back? Or are you just like the public's consumption for this? Like you said, like someone says something, there's no basis. It's it's the people, like their their appetite to take things and run with it. Like, what does our world become, Right. Oh, you know, I'm a totally glass half full kind of person. So I have to tell you that for every negative, unkind thing, I have hundreds and thousands of people who literally come up to me every single day in the street, in the restaurant, in a store, anywhere I go, who walk up to me and say, I didn't commit suicide because of your show. I left an abusive relationship. I started my business. And so whenever I'm feeling down and I think of all the negativity, I think to myself that I've amassed 700, a little over 700,000, 700,000 messages, comments from women and people who, whose lives have been changed by, because of the book or the show. And so that's what keeps me going is that I did it for a purpose, seems to be working and I have to be strong enough to carry the burden of hate on my back. And I just got to toughen up and stand straight and say, I don't care because I did it for a reason and I'm going to keep speaking my truth. And that's it. Right. And think of all the people you have helped get out of that's a situation. It. That's the only way to do it. You know, I, I mean, I literally today, I mean, not today, sorry, this past weekend, um, I was in uh, Shelter Island Um, and this woman comes over to me and she says, you changed my life. And of course it's not someone I know. And she said, you know, her entire life, um, she dreamt of starting this business, but she made all these excuses. She's too old. She doesn't know enough. Then she saw my show. She's like, well, Julia did it. I have no more excuses left. And so she got up and she started the business. Um, like six months after my show came out and she told me that she just broke her, she just broke the 5 million mark. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, considering they don't have that in them. Right. I mean, it gives people a lot of, but they do. That's the thing. People have it in them. They just don't know they have it in them. People don't realize that you don't know what you're capable of until you go and try it. It's okay to know up it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to get things wrong you just don't stop until you get it right 
How hard was it? Because right here you are, you know, as we saw during season two, going through this awful divorce, which you're still going through with Silvio, but like then to lose, you know, the company, like we saw you get quote unquote fired. I haven't lost it yet, baby. Nope. We're we're really close to getting it back. So that was my One next day question. Time. Like that's still that's still underway. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I have a document that says I own half the company. So it's gonna be hard to mess with that one. Right. Forty nine point nine 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 eight percent or whatever it is. Yeah. And that's still alive and it's still oh, yeah. active. I mean, it's a document. It's signed, it's witnessed. I don't see how you get around it, but then he's gotten away with things I don't understand how he's gotten away with before. But you know, I ha I have to believe that when there's a real trial, not just a two day emergency rush thing, when there's a real trial and people will see all the documents and all the evidence, at that point, justice will be served finally. Do you have any like idea when the trial will be? Like, is there any timeline? Or, and I mean, if you have a crystal ball, you please give it to me right now, and I will take it from you. I know lawsuits <laughs> are it's a whole thing, right? It's a whole. Yeah, but you know what? I'm a very forward focused. I launched Plus Body by Julia Hart. I'm not standing still. I've gone to Ukraine. I've gone to Rwanda. I I've done these founders forums where I bring women who have started, you know, who have startups and VC funders and get funding for them. Um, I've led a women's march in for Iranian women in Washington. I've become very politically active because of Roe versus Wade. So that man is not slowing. No one's slowing me down. I'm going to find a way to get my mission, which is my independent women army, one way or another. And I'm not going to stop until I've succeeded. I love that. Well, talk to me about Plus Body because I know that is alive yeah, and well. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, thankfully... You know, and again, I want to apologize to people. Um, I didn't realize that so many people would buy it so quickly. So we are out on certain sizes. We're producing the next batch. So if we don't have your size, I'm really sorry, guys. It's coming. Um, but, you know, we're very grateful for the tremendous response we've received um, from people. I think, you know, most people really love it because it basically solves all shapewear problems. Millions upon millions of women all over the world wear shapewear. And millions upon women, millions of women never want anyone to know they wear it because it's ugly. It looks like granny panties. It's nasty. It's and it's thick, so it makes you wider. And it doesn't have your cup size, so it gives you pancake boob. Nothing about shapewear is great. And basically, we took shapewear and turned it upside down. Our shapewear, because we don't dye it, we heat fuse it. We've created this process by to color clothing. So the first time in the, in the world, shapewear is like laundry. It's pink, it's red, it's blue, it's beautiful, it's patterned, and you could stretch it from here to eternity and it does not budge. And then once we figured out that fusion process, we realized, well, what other, other ways can we extrapolate and utilize it? And so then we started fusing all the pieces of, um, what's it called? Compression together into one thin paper, thin piece of paper. And so it doesn't add to your girth. And we put in cup sizes. So for the first time, you could buy a medium with a B cup or a medium with a double D because a woman is not just her body size. She's also her breast size. So we really solved all the problems of shapewear. And it's so nice. You could wear it out. You could wear it in. You could wear it under. You could wear it by itself. I just had a singer reach out to me and said she would like to wear my shapewear on stage while she performs. And I was like, amazing. Do it your way. That's the whole point of it is do whatever you want. I'm just going to make you look better while you're doing it. Is this true? I read somewhere the idea came from Bridget Jones' diary. Yes. <laughs> like, okay, walk me through that. Okay. So you know that like pop culture wise, I still have massive holes, right? I started watching television, like modern current television, like eight years before I left my community. I started reading books, started watching movies, but I'm still catching up, you know, like, um, the caring group, this was such a funny thing. The caring group invited me to this like very small niche group of people who got to watch Thelma and Louise at the Paris Theater in New York with Thelma and Louise, with Sir Susan Saran 